Hi everyone, my name is Audrey and welcome to my channel. Today I'm giving you my July wrap up.
So for the month of July, my goal was to read eight books for the month. Since I am currently on vacation, summertime, I am not teaching, I should have more time uh, to read. I did not manage to read eight books, but I did manage to read six books and like maybe seven if you want to count like a specific book. Um, but yeah, overall it was an amazing um, reading month and I'm really happy with uh, what I've gotten to. So without further ado, let's go into what I've read. So as I do every month, I participated in the Buzzwordathon and for the month of July, the Buzzword was to read a book that had a weather word in the title and for that book I chose A Psalm of Storm and Silence by Roseanne A. Brown. This is the second book of the uh, Song of Wraith and Ruin duology. I don't know if that's the name of the duology but yeah I didn't manage to get to that book unfortunately. I am going to roll, roll it over to the next TBR and for and hopefully uh, read it next month. But I did manage to read the long, the long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, which is which was the buzzword for emotions, which was for April. So I managed to finally finish this book. I gave it a 4.5 stars. This follows a very eclectic, peculiar set of crew who um, punch holes into space so that it's easier to travel from one planet to another. And they are hired to do a specific job, which they don't typically do. And we follow them along and their adventures. I really enjoyed the character. If, if you like character driven stories, this one is definitely for you. You do get to know your characters throughout uh, the decisions they make as well as like how they bond together and their relationships and that was very very well developed. There's not much there plot wise I feel. It's not that nothing happens, it's just not plot heavy but it's still very enjoyable. I feel like this is the like the first chapter of a real adv adventure and journey. That makes sense. But I really enjoyed uh, spending a lot of time with these characters. I love the inclusivity with uh, disability and other cultures and being inclusive of other cultures, other species uh, from space and all that. I really, really enjoy that. How this crew is trying to be the most inclusive as possible, being tolerant and accepting of everyone's differences. And that's really beautiful to see and to read. I just didn't give it a five star because I didn't feel like it was a five star read for some reason. It, it did take a long time to get there. The plot was a little bit predictable, predictable in my opinion, um, because they did go from point A to point B. Yeah, they, they had a little bit of setbacks uh, to go from point A to point B, but nothing major. And it's not necessarily my favorite, but it was still very well done and I still really appreciate it. Um, it just wasn't quite a five star for me, but I am still going to pick up the next books in this series because I do want to uh, continue following this crew. And that's just a lot fr coming from me because I do have a space phobia. So me wanting to continue this is, is saying a lot. I also participated in the in the Choose Your Own Adventure uh, readathon that goes on every month by Book Roast, which is an extra to the Magical Readathon for the month of July. The prompt was to read a book in the dark, so I pretty much read a lot in the dark. So like that prompt was fulfilled easily with many many books. So yeah, I'm not gonna specifically name one book for that one because I read I read a lot uh, in the dark. And for the rest of the books that I read this month, I was just trying to finish the books I started in June and try to finish as many books as possible from my TBR of that month, but also books that I've been trying to put on TBRs 
that I haven't started yet that I just want to get to and make some progress into so I can move on to other books if that makes sense. So the first book I finished was K.K. by Vaishnavi Patel. So this is a retelling of um, another book that I don't remember. I'll try to put the name of the book here. And it's usually set from the point of view of this other character that did some other stuff. And this one is a more feminist point of view following KK who rule alongside um, her husband. And we follow her journey when she was a child and until uh, she was an adult and got married and had a kid and things got really, really complicated, but um, it was really interesting. I loved the feminist point of view of the tale. I'm not very familiar with the original source material, but I really enjoyed this one. I loved how our character was a very strong female character trying to root for her female sisters and any other female parts that were coming to her for aid and help and that she inspired so many people to just stand up and stop being pushed aside as just not a proper human. So I really enjoyed that. I love the characters. I really enjoyed the magical system that was in here. It was very intriguing, something that I've never read about before. So, and I do enjoy that when that happens. I always love learning about other cultures and I feel like there's a good part of this book that is very, very cultural. I was hesitant at first between giving it a 4.5 or a 5 star since I had a hard time putting it down and I just wanted to pick it back up all the time. I decided to go with a 5 star, but I don't think it's a book for everyone. It's very, I haven't read Circe. Um, people have been comparing it to Circe. I, I can't make that, that comparison because I haven't read it, but I feel like it's, it's not very plot driven either. It's still very character driven. It's very political. So if you're into mythologies and legends and stuff like that, this actually might be for you. The next book I read was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zavine, and I gave this book 3.5 stars. I was hesitant. I didn't know what to rate this book. I had a hard time processing it. So you follow these two characters who uh, met when they were young at a hospital and they just spent their time playing video games and they do grow up and go apart and come back together uh, when they are in college. One is in MIT and the other one is in Harvard. They decide to build a video game together and so on and so forth. Start Things start going on from there. We also have two other main secondary characters that are very important, maybe three. And I love their characters. I really, really did enjoy them. It's just, I didn't feel like anything special was coming out of it for me. But then again, I'm not very uh, contemporary. I'm, I don't read contemporary that much. It was fun to read and to see how they evolve through time. And there was a miscommunication trope, which I think was well done though this time, because that it's the type of trope that I really, really hate when that happens. It's the main reason why I don't read romance much, but it was more like mixed signals type of thing instead of a real miscommunication trope. They know that the other person wasn't telling the truth, but they just went along with it without actually saying the real stuff. I don't know if that makes sense, but it really didn't bother me and that's saying a lot for that trope. So I think that was well done. It's just, I didn't feel much out of it. I didn't understand the ending as well. That didn't make it for me. I was aiming for a four star because I, I thought it was a really good book, but I was really disappointed with the ending. I feel like there was no ending, if that makes sense. So that bothered me. So that's why I think I gave it a 3.5 instead of a four. I still think it's a very good book, well written. And like the author really puts a lot of 90s stuff in here. It is set in the late eighties and goes on into the nineties. And then because they are in university in the nineties and throughout the 2000s and so on and so forth. Uh, a lot of references to gaming and old games 
and that was really really well done i loved that the concept of the games were really really nice to go through the and how the author integrated them into like the writing i think that was really well done I think the reason why I didn't feel like it was a five star and this amazing book as much as the hype is going with it is because I didn't feel much attached to the story. I enjoyed the characters, but I wasn't attached to them as I usually am with other books. Um, so I think it's just personal reason. I don't know. Uh, so I think it's just a me thing and not necessarily a book thing but enjoyment of a book is very important into rating it so that's why i'm going with a 3.5 um if it wasn't for the ending it would have been a four star still a very good book and if you're into gaming i would strongly recommend this one to you as well the next book I read was A Song of Rates and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. So I finished the reread of the first book. I just didn't have time to get to the second one, but I did finish uh, the first one. It's still a four star for me. I think the first time around I rated it a 4.25. I think I'm rounding it up to a 4.5 this second time around. But this is a very fun book, very good YA book. Um, just to keep in mind that it is a YA when you read it. Yeah, well, you follow, you have these two POVs. You have um, Malik that left his hometown and is going to this capital city for this big festival event, uh, which is called Solstatia. And he's trying to get a job and get some money back to his family because they're extremely poor and their culture is not well perceived by people. So there's a lot of discrimination against them. And they do have a magical system in here, which is very much tied, I feel like, to anxiety, at least for Malik. And I really like that um, mental health representation. So yeah, they arrive to the capital and this race kidnaps his little sister because he was traveling with his older sister as well as his younger sister and he kidnaps the youngest and asks him to kill the princess in order to get her back and uh this competition with the festival will give him access to other uh, princess and maybe kill her hopefully and you also follow the pov of the princess karina and her mother dying and she doesn't want to have anything to do with the responsibility of being queen and she found this ritual to get her mother alive again to do that she needs to king kill a king and she's going to make the champion of the competition she's going to make him a king and therefore kill him and uh, get her way so you can imagine how it's going to go I prefer Malik's point of view because I really love that character. I enjoy the princess character as well, but not as much as Malik. And I, I honestly, I really love the, rep the representation of mental health in this book. I feel like it's a lot tied to that and discovering about uh, how the world got to that point. We don't know everything, but I feel like in the second book, we're going to get to know more of it and understand it more. And I didn't rate it at five star because I feel like the competition is not high stack, high stake enough for me, if that makes sense. Because if you lose, you don't die. And Karina's motivation to kill a king just because she doesn't want to have the responsibility to become queen. And it's not high stake enough for me, if that I don't know if that makes sense. I feel like, yes, she does need, and I, I don't want to put down her grief and say that her, and invalidate her grief of losing her mother. I get that. It's just like, I don't feel it's high stake as much as Malik's situation. I feel like it's uneven on that point. And that's one of the reasons why I give it a 4.5 instead of five stars. But other than that, I did forget some good parts and some twists at the end of the book. I remembered a good part of it, but not like the last two or three chapters, which I was surprised about, but I'm glad I reread it because I'm going to go into the second book with that in mind and uh, hopefully some things will get 
resolved. But I'm excited to pick up the second book. If you like YA fantasy, I strongly recommend it. The next book I read or reread was Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. This follows a man called Wallace who wakes up and discovers that he's dead and he sees it himself at his funeral and at his own funeral he sees this reaper who brings him to this little tea shop in the middle of nowhere and meets Hugo who is a who helps people cross over when they, when they die and he stays there as long as he needs to and try to look into his life and he has to deal with all of that stuff Wallace did not have a very good life. He was mean, he was unhappy, and he tries to reflect on all of that. So lots of trigger warnings for death, obviously, and death of a child, grief, death of an animal, all sorts of death and area. You can pretty much put all of those triggers in. So be aware. But this book uh, made me cry the first time around when I was reading it. And I did cry as much uh, the second time I read it. So it really, really got to me and to my feelings. And I cried like three times. I know some people didn't cry to it, but I think it really depends on your own life experience. If you have dealt with grief and death in your life or not, I think that has a lot to do with it and if you're a parent or not because there is um, at some point a child involved so yeah I think that can influence a lot of like the crying part and I don't cry very easily <laughs> into books uh, but yeah and this is also very very cozy so not much happens it's a lot about reflection and it, it's more philosophical and I think it's a very cozy contemporary read if that makes sense um I think I understand more what cozy means now uh that I'm rereading this and I'm and I've discussed it with a couple of uh my fellow friends and I think that's that's my understanding of it it's very very cozy and not much happens and it's not the point of the book but why I really appreciate it is because it does make you reflect on your own life as well as what's happening in there so yeah I don't know maybe not for everyone which I understand but uh for me it really made it and I gave it a five star again the next book I read was Parce que tu es une femme merveilleuse by Sophie Bergeron which is um, the book that was written by my neighbor and I was asked to review. In English, it is uh, because you are a wonderful woman. Uh, so this is a self-development book. I don't typically read this. I don't think I've ever read a book like this before. So this is my first time. It's not my type of book. I don't think I'm the targeted audience for this, but I do enjoy that there are a lot of exercises about like how to let go of the unimportant stuff that are in your life and try to focus on the positive, try to focus on being grateful to what you do have, as well as a lot of quotes that are here and you have a ref reflection out of these quotes. And that I find um, quite fun that you can just like look at one quote and make your own reflection on those quotes yourself you can do one every day one every week whatever and there are some exercises that you can apply to your everyday life which i found was pretty useful but again as i said i don't think this book is for me it's not translated in english yet but i think she does want to translate it um it is on amazon if you are interested in it and yeah and as i usually do i don't give a rating on a non-fiction book that is six books but i did have one last tiny book that was included in my goodreads challenge but this one was not in my goodreads challenge because she's not on goodreads but i did buy a guide for virtual it's not assistant admin so people who want to freelance uh and kind of like my bookkeeping stuff that i do with my business and it's a little guide on and steps on what to do 
to get there and be successful in your business. So I did read that one. Again, I don't typically read that type of books. I'm not reading it, but I didn't find it very useful for me uh, because I do know a lot of stuff about entrepreneurship. I've taken some classes in university. I've had a coach, a business coach as well. Like I didn't really learn something new. I was just reminded of a couple of stuff that I kind of forgot that I knew, but didn't put forward into my business that I'm going to put forward. But other than that, it, I don't feel like this was for me either. It was a very quick read and I kind of skim read it uh, as well, but a book is a book. So uh, yeah, that was my seventh-ish book for the month. So overall, it was a great reading month. I'm really, really happy with what I've read, what I've done, and I'm excited to see uh, how August is going to go. I was scared for a bit that I wasn't going to be able to read much in July, but uh, that end of the month, I really managed to finish a lot of books. Um, so I'm really happy with that. Let me know in the comments how your reading month went. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Did you agree with me or not? I would love to discuss it with you in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe if you wish. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. And I will see you soon in the next one. Bye.